Hello, this is for all you game jammers out there who want to quickly get set up to do an XR project for your game jam. As always, links are in the description below. Go to the Godot website and download the latest version of Godot. We are using 3.5 today. Go to the Godot XR template GitHub repository, click on code and select download zip. Go to your favorite asset website, I'm using Kenny.nl today, and download some assets. Unzip your copy of Godot in a place of your choice. Unzip the XR template in a place of your choice. Rename the folder if you wish. Unzip the assets you've downloaded into an asset folder inside the project. I recommend only adding models in the file format you wish to use. Here we'll use GLTF. Start Godot, click on Import, select the template folder, and click on Import and Edit. Our template project is a fully configured XR project with a loading scene, a scene switcher, and two example scenes. Before we start, we need to make sure our export templates are installed. Go to Editor, Manage Export Templates, and select Download and Install. In this video, we're going to use a PC VR headset to test. If you want to test on a MetaQuest, you need to follow some extra steps. There should be a link to a video to help you with this somewhere on screen. You'll find the important files for your game in the folder called Game. In here, you find the main scene that is already open. This is our loading screen and is shown whenever we change scenes. You can customize this with your own splash screen. Under Levels, we find the levels the player can enter. Under Main Level, we find the level that gets loaded first. The default level here lets the user move forward through a portal. It then loads the first level. The test level is a simple example level. We're going to replace this with our own, but we will reuse some of its components. Take some time to look at how it's put together. Go to Scene, New Inherited Scene, select Game, Levels, Level Base. This gives us an empty scene to build our level in. We have our character controller already added in this scene, including visualization of the player's hands. The setup also supports picking up objects and letting the user move with the joystick on their controllers. Let's save our scene. We create a folder for this. We'll call it tutorial level. We go back to our main level, find our zone switch node and change the scene associated with this. I've already prepared this little environment for our demonstration. The floor and portal are the same as used in the test scene included in a template. The rest of the scene is filled with objects from Kenny's pack scaled to size. The fence has a collision shape so the player can't leave the area. And the little workbench also has a collision shape. Finally, I'm using this neat little script called Scatter which is part of the template. It allows us to randomly place a large number of the same object. By adding a few of these, we have some rocks, some grass, and some trees. Let's give the player something to pick up. We go to Scene and select New Inherited Scene. We select the pickable script in the XR Tools object folder. This gives us a nice scene with all the logic built in so this object can be picked up by the user. In the File System browser, we'll navigate to the asset we want to use here. We drag the object we want into our scene. Now we add two scenes to our gun. In our selection dialog, simply search for grab. Then select the grab point hand left scene and repeat to add our grab point hand right scene. You can unhide these scenes to see a visualization of the hand. We position the node so when that hand grabs this object, it will be held in that position. We scale our gun down slightly. This is how we've positioned the left hand. And this is how we've positioned the right hand. Don't forget to hide them again. Now we can add our collision shape. This shape allows the gun to interact with other objects. And it helps the player's hands detect they are in reach of the object so it can be picked up. We create a box shape and size it to the object. Let's save our work. We also rename the root node. With the root node selected, scroll down its properties where we find the script and select Extend Script from the drop-down menu. We start by creating a function called Action. This function is called when the player is holding the object 
and presses the trigger. Make sure we call the existing logic on the parent script first. We add a variable called canFire, which we set to true. Then in action, we check if we can fire. If so, we call a method that will spawn our bullet. We need to create this function so we can implement it in a minute. Back in our action function, we set our can fire to false. Now we add a timer object to our scene. We call this cooldown. We set the wait time to 0.3 seconds. And we take one shot. Then on the node tab, we double click on the timeout signal and add a signal method to our script. Now we can start the timer in our action function. And in our timeout signal, we set can fire back to true. Next, we add a position node to our gun. We can also use spatial node. We move this node in front of the gun barrel. We rename this spawn point. We now need a bullet, so we go to new scene, make this a 3D scene, and change the type to rigid body. We call this bullet. Now we drag our foam bullet asset into our scene. We need to reposition this. Now we add a collision shape to our scene. We use a capsule shape and we resize this to fit our bullet. We change the collision layer to dynamic world and the bullet mask to static and dynamic world. Now we save this scene. We create a script on our bullet. We add a timer node, we call this lifetime, we give it three seconds and make it a one shot timer. We also auto start it so it starts the moment our bullet spawns. On the timeout method, we simply call Q3 to remove the bullet. Back in our gun script, we add a line at the top that defines an export variable for our bullet scene. We select our bullet scene as the bullet for our gun. In our spawn bullet function, we first check if we have a bullet scene. If so, we instance that bullet scene. If we have a new bullet, we call set as top level on the bullet and set this to true. This ensures the bullet will move independently from the gun when added as a child. Now we add our bullet to our scene. We set the transform of our bullet, which will now be global, to the global transform of our spawn point. Now we set the linear velocity of our bullet to the direction it needs to fly. We do this by taking the Z component of the basis of our transform and multiplying this with a default velocity. We add an export variable for this velocity with a default of 10 meters per second. This is a fairly low value, but it is a foam flinging gun after all. In our gun scene, we're going to add a node to our gun called XR Tools Highlight Visible. This node allows us to create an outline for our gun. We add a mesh instance to this node. Now we copy the mesh from our gun model and paste it into the new mesh instance node. We apply the same scaling to our gun as we did before. We create a new material in our first material slot. We turn on unshaded. We set calm mode to front. We tick grow. We grow by 0.01 and we change our color. We save this material and we apply this material to the other slots as well. We need to change the collision layer on our gun to the pickable objects layer and change our mask to include the first three layers. Let's add the gun in so we can start testing. We select the root node, we select our gun scene and we position our gun on the table. To save on time, I am not going to run the project until the very end of this video. But I recommend testing often by pressing the play button in the top right hand corner. We need something to shoot at, so we create another new scene. We're keeping the root node as spatial and renaming it to target. We add an area node to it. We change the collision mask to dynamic world so we can detect our bullets. And we drag our target asset into our scene. We add a collision shape to our area. We create a cylinder shape for this and position and size it appropriately. I'm making it slightly larger than it should be, so it is more likely to catch the bullet. Now we save the scene. We add a script to our scene and connect our body entered signal on our area node. For now, only bullets can trigger this signal, so we're going to keep things simple. We're going to cue free our bullet so it disappears from the world. 
we'll also move our target to a new location. But first we need to move our 3D model under the area node. We assign a new random location to the area node. We do this on our local transform. Now we can add the target into our scene. Let's do a quick test to see this all work. What is missing are some sound effects. I've downloaded two sounds from freesound.org. Let's add that in. In our gun scene, add an audio stream player 3D. We position this near the muzzle. We rename it to shoot sound. We select toy gun shot sound. In our script, in our action function, we simply call play on our sound node. On our target scene, we also add an audio stream player 3D. We rename this to hit sound. We select our hit sound sample. We first move our audio player to where our target currently is. Then we play our sound. This way, the sound will seem to come from where the target was hit, even though we move the target. And here is our end result. Our player starts in our main scene and can walk to our portal. Now we can pick our gun up and shoot at our target. Each time we hit the target, it moves to a new location. If you found this video useful, please give it a like. See you all next time.